Aloha, everyone, and welcome to Lillian's Vegan World, coming to you live from gorgeous Honolulu in Hawaii. Uh, we are almost uh, coming to another shutdown, unfortunately, so all of us are going to be spending lots more time at home, and we'll have lots of stuff to think about and lots of tools to help us improve our well-being. I'm so, so excited and happy to introduce my awesome guest today, Miss Gloria Payoyo, the beautiful and insightful uh, professional life coach and creator of Hot Empowered Nest Movement. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Gloria. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. It's such a pleasure to have you on. I am uh, becoming a very big fan of yours, I must say. Tell us, yes. So I, I do want to tell the viewers first very briefly how you and I met. And I might let you go ahead and uh, and tell it how you saw it. <laughs> sure. Um, so I'm very actively involved in PHI, PSI, which is Health Assessment Institute. And we had our first uh, Zoom PSI in-person experience. However, the facilitator zoomed in in July, and um, I was a small group leader, which just meant that I got to um, encourage a small group of people to uh, through the process, and Lillian was a part of my small group. I know. What are the odds on that? Um, I'm guessing <laughs> there were about, how many people would you say participated? About 50? Would, would that be correct? Uh, just about right under, like, 40 four ish. Uh huh. And so out of the forty four, I do know that there was definitely one other vegan that I met there. <laughs> but for me to fall into your hands, mm -hmm. I am under the uh the belief that we were meant to cross paths. That's yeah. always how I feel when, when I'm excited about meeting someone. So Gloria, you were my you were my small group leader and yeah, we just loved you. Everybody really embraced you and you had so much to teach us and so much insight to give us and it was just honestly an amazing experience for me. And I do I do want to say that even during all the you know all the COVID mask wearing and um, you know all the restrictions we had obviously the six feet social distancing mm -hmm. we were still definitely able to pull it off. But anyway before before going on Gloria how has your COVID experience been this year? Um I think I, I might be a part of the smaller group where I, I actually love this time. It's been a beautiful time to slow down, to really see what's important in life and to kind of base my life on what's important. Whereas before I was, you know, we're just so busy that sometimes we're just keeping up with things. And so having the slowdown has been a beautiful gift for me personally because I've been able to kind of align my life with what really matters. Does that include you wanting to share with other people how how you think we can do things better? Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, so where I was going with that, Glory, is that I think this has made not only people who are looking looking for a better you know, a better everything, a better life in all the aspects, better, you know, what was it inside that we learned about the, the most important aspects in our life, Gloria, the emotional, the mm. physical, the spiritual, and the... Mental. Mental, right. Mm -hmm. So I think, I mean, I, I fall short on all of those things. And now I am so lucky to have the tools that I learned at Sai and with you to, you know, kind of think, and now that I have the time during this stay-at-home um, COVID world we live in, now I do have the time to really align myself with everything that I believe and, and try and try and get everything into balance. It just makes so much sense. I feel like I've honestly walked into a new world after that mm. seminar. So thank you so much. <laughs> That's beautiful. I, I it's why I volunteer so much of myself to say it's, it's just a change of people's lives. It does. Well, Gloria, I have rambled on so much about Sai and COVID. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Tell me what, what you do here in Hawaii. Are you from Hawaii? Is it originally? 
Uh, no, I had a very nomadic youth. Um, I had a very, like, my parents did not have any, I did not have a stable foundation growing up. So very nomadic youth. Um, was blessed to come to Hawaii the summer before my freshman year at high school. And I uh, was never going to leave. And then got married to someone in the military and had to learn what that was all about. And uh, we moved off the island. And then we traveled about 15 years, not quite 15 years, and um, was able to come back to Hawaii in 2015. And this is my home. <laughs> my mom is here, so we would come and visit every other year. So this is the stable part of my life, is um, Hawaii. I went on a healing journey. I became an entrepreneur, uh, which is funny because before that I worked in the federal government and um, I did preventative behavioral health for the federal government for seven years in all different capacities, whether it was one-on-one, -on -one, whether it was families that were looking at breaking up, families trying to stay together through some tough times, um, small groups, large groups, even for an entire base at one point. And um, was called to becoming an entrepreneur. And once I became an entrepreneur, kind of realized that the only thing, like I was holding myself back from my dreams, which in turn um, sent me on my personal development um, journey. And that led me to becoming a professional coach. Excellent. That, that's an amazing story. Now, I have to ask one thing you didn't mention um, during the sharing of that was how you became vegan. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm curious because this is a huge thing. Mm -hmm. When people choose to change the, you know, the way they look at food and what they've been taught from a child that we're, that we're supposed to eat, which turns out actually to not be the case now that all this you know, information is out that probably eating meat is uh, not so good for you after all. So I am so curious as to how you ended up on a plant-based diet. Sure. Um has to do with slide two. <laughs> so, really? Mm -hmm. I was on the, so Sai has a ranch. They have the basic in Honolulu. However, if you want to do the advanced courses, they're on the ranch in California. So I was at my slide seven, and I was on the ranch, and we had one day that was outdoors, very physical. And I had stopped giving up. I didn't like seafood. Uh, when I was younger, I just decided I didn't like seafood and I stopped eating it as a young child. And then when I was like 19, I gave up red meat. I gave up beef and pork at 19. However, I still ate chicken and turkey. And I realized on that outdoor physical day, because they were serving ranch food, that, and because I wasn't under a special diet, if you had a special diet, they had special food. And if you were regular, <laughs> And you ate with a regular line. And so I was considered regular because I ate meat at that point. And they didn't have chicken. They had burgers and hot dogs. But it was just sort of a moment of, um, it was a moment of freaking out that I needed animal protein. And I realized that I was sort of addicted to animal protein because these vegans and other people were able to be just fine, but it, I was in my head. And so I didn't like that. And then I, when I came back home, I had a friend who is full food plant based and they would have classes. So I went to one of the classes and learned, um, about whole food plant based and that, you know, you have all the protein you ever need in the plant, but the meat is kind of just the middleman because the meat gets their protein from the plant and, uh, began a food delivery system that delivered whole food plant based food to me. And then once I, did that for a while, and then I started to make my own food, and so I'm either whole food plant-based or vegan. So, that's interesting. Usually, um, usually a lot of people will come across like a documentary or something really traumatic that they saw or heard or something to do with the animals and you know, how they're mistreated and abused in the slaughterhouses, but that's interesting, your story. So, this goes to show, Gloria, um, how appetizing as well vegan food must have been. And I have heard from so many people inside that the uh, the food that is available that they 
serve mm. at the ranch is, is apparently incredible. And I'm a vegan chef, I tell you. I um, we, we don't live in the days of boring salads and brown rice anymore. Okay, wonderful. Gloria, we are going to take a short break and just uh, get some messages across and come back with some photos that you have to share and more insight into the beautiful world of Gloria Paiolo. Stay tuned, everyone. Welcome back, everyone, to Lillian's Vegan World. I'm your host, Lillian Cuny, coming to you live from gorgeous Honolulu. Today I have with me my gorgeous guest, Gloria Paiolo, the professional life coach and creator of Hot Empowered Mess Movement. I love that name. <laughs> Gloria, before we go any further, I, I have to uh, get you to give out some information to viewers who may want to join any of your programs. And while we are talking about that, please tell us about some you know, really awesome stuff you have coming up. Sure. Um, what I'm focused on right now is I have a mastermind. Um, it be I became aware that a lot of people during this time are struggling with maybe some consistency and to do some accountability. Um, because even though the world has slowed down and things have changed, um, a great time for us to continue to build our businesses and work towards our goals, whether they're personal or professional. So I have a mastermind that begins on September 1st. Um, but it's a small mastermind. We still have some slots open, however. And I have the Sacred Path, which is an online or in-person um, program. And it is to support um, people to finding and falling in love with their authentic selves because when we do that, we just show up in the world differently. And then on top of that, we um, create our world and kind of like our dream life versus the one that sort of got handed to us or kind of when we're on not thinking about it, what kind of just happened. We start to become creators. Wonderful. So if anyone does want to get in touch with you, please let us know how we can do that. Absolutely. Uh, I have an email, hotempoweredmessmovement at gmail.com, and my phone number is um, area code. It's listed on the screen. <laughs> Text or phone okay. call is great. And, awesome. And uh, we did, we should mention, Gloria, that you are on, so you are on Facebook, you are on Instagram. What is your Facebook account name? It is my personal name, so it is Gloria Stewart Payoyo. I have a Facebook group called Hot Empowered Mess Movement. Um, and then my IG is at GPAYO. Awesome. So do, definitely do get in touch with Gloria. She's fantastic and uh, I'm sure will guide you in the right direction. Gloria, let's take a look at some of your photos that you have to share with us. That's a beautiful photo. <laughs> I love Thank it. Thank you. Gorgeous. Let's have a look at another one. This is a lovely photo. Gloria, how important is self-esteem in this day and age? I, I believe that it's incredibly important. Um, it's sort of counterintuitive. We're taught that loving ourselves is selfish. We're actually, when we love ourselves, because we can give ourselves that grace and that compassion and forgiveness, we can then give it to others. Um, so we actually become kinder when we love ourselves. We become more compassionate, more giving, more understanding. And so we, it's incredibly important. 
you just can show up in the world very different. Um, if I love myself, I don't need external validation. So I'm not giving for that. I'm giving because I truly want to give unconditionally. Um, I think it just changes everything. Mm, absolutely. That's something that I, I really was happy to learn about mm-hmm. at Psy, about loving the, thyself, loving yourself, um, before you can actually show that same love to someone else. So I, I think it's incredibly important. And I, the reason I ask that is because I have, I have so many friends on social media who have, you know, Facebook, Instagram accounts and don't post any actual photos of themselves. I know it could, it's probably nothing to do with their self-esteem or anything, but I just find it, yeah, I find some, sometimes there might be that lack of confidence or when, when there are people on the other hand, you know, we're not, none of us are Kardashians, but, <laughs> but you know, there are, there are people on the other hand who really just go for it and post photos of them and can come across as being a little bit on the other scale of that. Um, but, yeah, I definitely agree. Self-esteem is so important, isn't it? Absolutely. Let's have a look at another of your photos. Beautiful. You look <laughs> so beautiful here. You know what I, I've been saying to my husband recently? All dressed up and nowhere to go. <laughs> <laughs> like, what did you do on this day you took that gorgeous photo? I just had my hair done, and I'm not someone that does my hair. I just wash and go. <laughs> and so my hair, I just came from the hair, and I was like, I look great. <laughs> yes, good on you. Good on you, and you, you, you look absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Let's have a look at another one. Gorgeous. What's in the background, Gloria? That is Diamond Head. Yeah, so okay. that was... Oh, go ahead. Um, that was, uh, I had participated in um, CLD, which is a SCI program. And then at the end of the 90 days, you have an acknowledgement night. And so that was my act night um, outfit. And I was just proud of myself at what I had accomplished during that time. Awesome. That's great. I, I love I love how you, you say things like that. I was proud of myself. Like, we need to really build ourselves up don't we we're only going to be confident if we believe we believe that we are worthy of you know giving love and being loved and and being successful and people wanting us to be successful so yes you you have a really good message i do hope that people um do get in contact with you anyone here in hawaii in on oahu who really is feeling like they could Use with, you know, use some really good guidance. Definitely get in touch with Gloria. She's amazing. Let's have a look at another picture. That's, That's one of my, cute. It's one of my favorite pictures. Yes. I like your face there, your expression. It's, uh, I don't know how, how to describe it. It's cheeky. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually my daughter. So, um, Oh, okay. She's looking into a mirror, and I'm looking at her, and I just love that picture. Nice. And what's your daughter's name? Her name is Kaya. Uh huh. And Kaya is Kaya is also a Psy graduate, isn't she? Yes. So, um, kids can go to Psy. The kids' basic is from I believe it's age five to age twelve. However, mm-hmm. both uh, parents that have guardianship have to go to Psy first. Okay. Um, and then, so she was a little bit too old, so she attended the Psy Basic, which is the same program that you attended, mm-hmm. at 13, and then she's gone to the Tunic Tunic a couple of times, and she volunteered. Awesome. I, I wished, yes, I, I actually, Gloria, have a question from a viewer, so th- thank you so much for the question and for a uh, um, you know, getting in touch with our show. The question, Gloria, is suppose you make a really bad mistake and the people around you suffer for it. Can you, should you, still love yourself? Isn't that essentially dishonest? Uh, no. <laughs> so the mistake created pain and suffering. 
right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to get back to an alignment. So we want to make amends if we're able to, um, to apologize and not just say, I'm sorry, actually like adjust our behavior, right? So we want to get to that point to where we can show up in front of those people in a different way. Because if we show up beating ourselves up and being unhappy and being mean to ourselves, then they're still experience pain and suffering around us. And so if we can come to forgiving ourselves, which that can sometimes be in process, but if we can get to forgiving ourselves and knowing that at that moment we did the best we could with what we had, and perhaps just learning some new tools so that we can show up differently. But once we get to that space where we can then come back into those relationships and show up with love and giving and compassion versus, I want to say hating ourselves, but beating ourselves up and sort of torturing ourselves or being angry, um, I, I truly believe that coming back to love is how we can give the most to others. And so if we want to show up differently around those people, Self-love can get us there. So yeah, we can, um, how do I explain I like to use metaphors. <laughs> so if I'm angry, I'm going to show up angry, right? Whereas, whereas if I can get to the space of where I can come back to loving myself and forgiving myself, then I can show up again with that compassion, with that grace, with that kindness, and show up around the people for me and how in a much more supportive and loving way. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense, Gloria. It, it really does. And again, I keep talking about side because I'm just mind blown at the, you know, the, the amount of tools and insight they give you and um, things you can do to improve all these things in your life and all these things that are holding you back. And I think one of them definitely for me was the forgiveness one. You know, feeling guilty perhaps about something that happened to you and then thinking that it was your fault and feeling bad. Just all that, you know, all that kind of stuff. But forgiveness, uh, when you can learn to forgive yourself, others will forgive you. I think too. So, yeah, thank you for answering, answering the question. Thank you to the viewer also for hosting it. Much appreciated. Um, but Gloria, let's move on to another question. Oh, sorry, another photo. There we are. Hot Empowered Best Movement. I love that, that name. That, that kind of, it sums it up, doesn't it? And it's awesome. Get in touch with Gloria. She's here, ready to help. <laughs> Next photo, please. Gloria, this is one of my um, new recipes, and it is teriyaki mushroom pulled pork. There is absolutely no pork in it, and I'm going to show you the video while we continue chatting. The video shows you how to make it. It's made from king oyster mushrooms. So it just goes to show, like, you, you really don't miss out on anything when you're on a vegan diet, do you? There's just so, so much out there to be had, so many delicious, you know, delicious things to be had. So check out the video. This is, uh, this is a pretty cool one. You can watch any, you can watch a lot of my vegan recipes on YouTube. I have about 200 recipes on my channel, Lillian Vegan. Also, Facebook, my, same Lillian Vegan Facebook, lots of vegan stuff there and recipes. And I am recently on Instagram as well, Lillian Vegan Chef Hawaii. So do check out some of my recipes. This is a, we're at, we're at the point in the video where we're making a homemade teriyaki sauce. This teriyaki sauce is from my book that is about to be released in October this year called Hawaii a Vegan Paradise. So this isn't actually one of the videos in there. The video, uh, sorry, the recipe that I have for pulled pork in my cookbook is made from jackfruit. Mm. Jackfruit also has the same kind of texture and consistency. But look at that, Glory. Doesn't that look almost horribly too much like the real thing? <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I, I get turned off by that because I haven't, I have never eaten meat or fish, so. I grew up a vegetarian and it just doesn't appeal to me, but very delicious. So definitely give the, give these recipes a try. And my book is coming out soon. So 
definitely grab a copy. Anyone out there who is interested in um, plant-based food, there it is, Lillian Vegan, um, Lillian Kumi, Hawaii, a vegan paradise, available in stores all around Hawaii in 2018, 2020 October. So. Okay. That's exciting. Gloria, we have uh, only one minute to go. Please answer these questions very quickly one in one word, okay? Okay. Ready to go? Coolest thing about Hawaii? The people. Favorite place in Hawaii? One year. First word that comes to mind when I say vegan? Healthy. You are vegan because? Health. Favorite Hawaiian word? Oh, aloha. One talent you wish you had? Uh, ability to play music. Oh, that's my the wrong word. How would your friends describe you? Kind. One thing you still have from your childhood. A blanket. <laughs> and something you want to leave the viewers with. Love yourself. Thank you so much, Gloria, for coming on the show today. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Stay tuned for another show in a couple of weeks' time on Lillian's Vegan World. Stay safe and aloha.